So here we're going to take a look at how to make a pie chart. A uh, pie chart is something that is very popular in business, very popular in certain fields and disciplines, but frankly, they really annoy me. I find them pretty hard to read. I find them pretty hard to often visualize, especially once you get beyond a handful of groups or categories. In this case, we have five different groupings, right, or five different colors. It won't be too bad to make a pie chart. Once you get beyond that though, it becomes very difficult to comprehend, especially if you have a whole bunch of tiny groupings. An additional reason is in cases where you have relative frequencies that are pretty close to each other, the human eye has a very difficult time discerning the difference between these close angles and which one actually has a larger area. So yes, pie charts are an accepted form of data visualization. They're commonly used form of data visualization but I do find that they are overused and often not used correctly. Um, not using correct circumstances is maybe the best, better way to say that. So for a pie chart, what we're looking at is essentially, well, a pie, right? Keeping in mind that this is a whole pie, 100%. What we then wanna do is we wanna split this pie up into five slices such that each of these five slices represents this percentage of the pie. And okay, you're like, wait, Keith, what percentage of the pie? This is a decimal. So okay, if you're not familiar with this, we can actually write 1% as 0.01, right? Similarly then, 10% as 0.1 or something like, I don't know, 25%, we could write that as 0.25, right? In this case here, this is 25%. That's a quarter of 100%. So 0.25 is a quarter of one, right? So this one would be similarly 100%. We could write it in that way too. So if you weren't familiar with that, very, very common. We will be using this a lot as we move through this course. We will be presenting percentages as this decimal notation. So hopefully you're familiar with that. If not, there you go. Let's just back up a little bit there. Okay, so for our pie, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna turn this into a pie chart. We're gonna wanna cut pieces of this pie such that, well, we have five different slices. So imagine we have our pie. Let me roughly make a good circle around this and we can just visualize it just like we're cutting this up for dessert. Depending on when you're watching this, this might be making you hungry. So one way that I find useful, because it's really hard to do pie charts by hand. One way that I find useful to kind of help us do this by hand is to kind of just cut it up into quarters to start. So let's do that. Let's cut this up into quarters to start. There's half. And then, uh, let's see if I can do this again. Freehanding this. Oh, that's not the right spot. Maybe there. Maybe there's half again. That looks a little bit high. Ah, we'll try one more time here. One more time. Right there. Yeah, maybe this side's a bit big, but we get the idea. We're then going to do another half and another half yet again. So what we now have is initially we had quarters. So each of these was 0.25. Then each of these halves are now going to be half of a quarter. So 0.125. In this way here, we can kind of figure out as we go through what our relative sizes of the pies are going to be. Going through, typically, I like to start with the largest frequency and move to the smallest. And so our first one here has a frequency of 0 0.375. So, okay, if we think about that, 0 0.375, that's just 0.25 plus 1.25. So, okay, why, why am I doing it that way? Well, because 0 0.25, that is down to center. Let me use a bit of a thicker line here. 0.25 is down to center. Well, if I cut across, that'd be 0.25. But if I cut over to here, 
this is going to be my first slice such that from here all the way to there is going to account for 37.5 percent of this pie or 0.375 the next slice then is going to be blue right so it's uh we can this is part of it with pie charts what is this this is my white slice next one that i want to do is going to be my blue slice at 0.25 so okay 0.25 that's 125 125 and that's going to bring me to there so let's write that in and can i find my pen there it is blue okay right we're doing over top of this pie it might be a little bit tough to see that's just more so it's a bit more visually appealing next one 0.1875 so okay 1875 you should notice that that is just going to be 0.125 and then a little bit more so what we're going to say this guy and bring it to maybe right about there so let's give that a go from there to about something like that perfect okay so this guy here what was that that was red so we'll write that bit in and then our last one to do is yellow yellow is 0.125 so keep in mind that's a half of the quarter so that's going to bring us to something like this and that is going to be let's see if i can write it in here yellow leaving our last one this last slice here i'm going to just pop it out and right over here that that slice there is black and all together we have our five slices of the pie getting increasingly smaller showing the relative frequency of white cars to blue cars to red yellow and black cars so that does us for pie charts again the pie was just there to make it visually appealing really we just have the circle without the pie so we could just go like this and boop, we have our pie chart. Imagine it without the white lines. Those were just there as our guide. If you can, if you have the eraser, you can erase those one by one. I can cheat here digitally. That's the great part about working on a computer. I can just, and we'd have our pie chart as such. Again, I'm not gonna have you do too much with pie charts, if anything at all. This is just kind of a, hey, these exist. And what they're really great for is really making fun pictures. So pie charts are a great way to show pyramids. But outside of that, you're not gonna to get too much from me for them. Let's move on then to our next section. Our next section will take a look at quantitative data. So these are this is data that's actually measuring a quantity this is gonna be data sets that are ordinal or higher in their level of measurement. Let's carry on and look at that.